This school in particular. Oh, jeez. Oh, yank it back. Oh, yank it back. Yank it back. Yoink. <laughs> What's up with it? What's up with it, man? It's the Frog the Frog coming at you with another reaction video. Exactly how good was Mr. Fernick Puskas? He has a gold scoring award named after him. Prestigious, by the way. He has a stadium named after him. But yet, he was left off of that top 10 football players of all time. Greatest football players of all time. Why is that? How so? It's not making sense. It's not clicking. It's not clicking. If this man has a whole prestigious goal scoring award named after him, how the hell he not top 10 all time, man? I need questions. I have questions that need to be answered, man. Let's see where it goes down. The game of football has come along. How good was Buddy? Generations. If you look at some people, it's something that I don't know about, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done pausing. Years of the sport. In terms of adversity in the game and in real life, few had a similar story to that of the great vetting coach. <laughs> that boy would tee it up. The greatest goal scorers of all time. The greatest of all time. Know, there's a chance that you might recognize It's an award name. named after him. There's an award every year for the most beautiful goal scored. Most in beautiful. All of so just how good was he actually? Just how insane was his career and the many records he made? Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the legendary story of Fedek Pushkas. Hey, man. I need to find something out. Tell me something I don't know, Raymond. Fedek Pushkas was born in Budapest, Hungary in Budapest. 1927. During a time... 1927? Was rather complicated. Like, bro! World War I ain't happened yet. World War II has not happened... They was out there playing football out there doing them, them conflicts, man. If a world war happened, you, I would have. I ain't even. I thought they put on the sports and stuff on pause now. Like many legends I've covered before, Pushkas grew up with strong ties to the game of football. His father was even a former coach and pro. Oh, As a yeah. teenager, Pushkas would show that a lot old. of promise. Before he was 18 years old, he would score 24 goals in 51 appearances. But That's in right. the 1945-1946 season, shortly after World War II, Pushkas would absolutely elevate his game seemingly out of nowhere. As an 18-year-old, he would score an insane 36 goals in 34 Hold up, hold up. Hey, that World War II did a Awakening on his ass. <laughs> Bro, before World War II, they say he averaged 21 goals in 56 games. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? After World War II happened, World War II happened, he turned 18. Hey, that boy say, I don't want to get drafted to no army on my mama. I have to tee up. 36 goals in 34 appearances. He said, you're not going to draft me, baby. Unless you're from Germany. Because there was a little track star from Germany. I forgot what he did to Hitler. But Hitler... Put his ass in the army and he ended up dying, bro. I heard, I learned about that during the Jesse Owens story. Rest in peace to that man. The Jesse Owens story. But damn, bro, he had an awakening after World War II. Boy. Averaging over a goal a game. This would also be his first time with the Hungary <laughs> National <laughs> Look at him chopping. Stutter stepping. Into appearances. Okay. Obviously, those numbers at that young of an age is absolutely insane for a footballer. Hell yeah. yeah. Like headline after headline 18. in the sports world. But back then, news didn't go around as quickly as it does today. And oh, also a lot of got about that. Outside of football at the time. They ain't had social media. This, not many people would find out about Pushkas until a few years later. Damn, bro. Imagine how many players got hold because of the non-advent of social media, man. Because of the news that spread like that. You had to go outside, go to your lo local local corner store, get a newspaper and read about it. Look at some of his early years at Kishbest, his first club. The numbers are absolutely insane. In the 1946-1947 season, goals, 29 appearances. 32 goals in 29 appearances. A 1.10 goals per game ratio. Pushkas would have the best goal scoring year of his career with 50 goals in 30 appearances. Damn! 1.56 goals per game. Damn! He the top goal scorer in Europe. And just the following year after that, he had the second most efficient goal scoring season of his career. He would go on to have an unthinkable 46 goals in 20 matches. Hey, that boy is scoring. 1.64. He was scoring. Ratio. Off the top of your head, how many players do you know have even had that level of efficiency? No doubt, in Hungary, Pushkas was a legend. He was the best and he know, scored bro. goals all the time. <laughs> I'm sitting there really thinking, like, I know players' stats and stuff. <laughs> don't mind me, bro. Don't mind 1949, me. First international team of Hungary, Pushkas... Oh, buddy, oh, drop that ass. 
He made that man drop that ass. <laughs> for at least the same amount of goals right. as matches he played every single year. I mean, just look at that. Only one year in which he didn't have more goals than games played. Damn, hold on. Pushkas, by all accounts, it's was all the games they played? fast. He wasn't a big guy, but he was strong and knew how to score and was an incredible finisher, especially around the goal box without question. Pair that with his perfectly soft first touch and add in some incredible positioning and you have the perfect formula for a goal scoring machine. Little by little, news of Pushkas would slowly be known to the world, especially as the Hungarian international team would challenge more countries and gain popularity. Now to understand more of the story... Was that, what is that, a tri Trivella Redabona? Because he kicked it with his left on the outside. In 1949, Pushkash's club, which was named Kishbest at the time, was taken over by the Hungarian Ministry of Defense, thus becoming the Hungarian Army Team and eventually changing their name to Budapest Honved. The so Army Team? Europe was basically divided in half by the infamous Iron Curtain. The NATO nations would occupy the west side while Soviet Union controlled lands were to the east, which meant Hungary would fall into the communist regime. Damn. And keep bro. this in mind as it'll play a huge role later on. God to it. Politics. Club used basically what could be considered as a draft in order to acquire the best Hungarian players in the country. During his career at Honved, Pushkas helped the club win five Hungarian league titles, making them the most dominant presence in the entire country. Are those, are those value like now, those Hungarian titles? Are those value like in the football world now? I don't know. But the magnitude of Pushkas's domination was just absolutely breathtaking. Bear in mind, this was before Pele's time, and nobody had really been as prolific at goal scoring as he was. Pushkas would okay. further continue his dominance in the Hungarian league, scoring 31 goals in 30 appearances in the 1949-1950 season. boy goal scoring machine for real, for real. That, he would have the most efficient goal scoring season of his career with 25 goals That's in him? 15 matches. A mind-blowing 1.66 goals per game ratio. His last couple of years at Honved would be the last time he really stayed under the radar to the rest of the world. He would score 25 goals in 23 appearances in 1951, and then go on to score 22 goals in 26 appearances in 19. I was just finna say that man never dropped below that little uh, 500 mark. He dropped below 52, 500, but it's cool. First time we would ever see him score less goals than the number of matches yeah. he played in eight whole years. Look off you. What? What are you number three? What are you doing, man? Played in eight whole Look years. at that. For his home country of Hungary, Come on, number bro. of matches he played in Come on, eight bro. whole years. <laughs> Come on, Hungary, bro. He was a football god. Now, Don't get mad and kick the ball on number three. Ministry of Defense, the players were technically part of the army and therefore had been given ranks. Pushkas just so happened to be given the rank of a major. And because, like I mentioned, Pushkas was lightning fast, they called him the Galloping Major, which to some of you might sound kind of weird. But it just meant that he was so fast, he was like a horse galloping through the pitch. The summer of 1952 came a huge moment not only for Pushkas and the Hungarian players, but for the Hungarian communist government, it was a chance to display their regime and use Pushkas and his talent as a political tool to show to the world. The Goddamn politics, bro. I, I think that's what kind of screwed him. I think them politics go end up screwing him over, bro. I just got a feeling. I got the a feeling. Hungarian government rallied all their resources to spread awareness of Pushkas and the Hungarian team and to show that their success oh, never mind. was like the success of the Communist Party. The Hungarian oh, team mind. back then was a powerhouse without a doubt, and Pushkas was their leader. They would go on to finally make a name for themselves, as, like I mentioned, nobody had really paid much attention to Pushkas. And he teed up. Hungary would eventually go on to win the Olympic gold medal, with Pushkas scoring four goals, including the final itself. Okay. Exposed to the seemingly unknown talent, but it wouldn't be until a match against England that Hungary would really be put on the world's notice. Hey, y'all, England boys, going outside even then. Fifty-three, England had never been beaten at Wembley. That was until they faced Pushkas. Hey. The English players had no idea who he was. That's how you rise up. But after that match, they would never ever forget, forget his name. Hungary would go on to dominate. That's how the bees. Pushkas scoring six of them on y'all heads. Even for how long ago they were, this goal in particular. Oh, jeez. Oh, yank it back. Oh, yank it back. Yank it back. Yoink. <laughs> that man have dropped that ass. Hold on, man. He yanked that hoe back on him. That's nasty. That's nasty. Even for how long ago they were, 
However, this goal Yoink. in particular, I think, will last throughout history as it will always Damn, be considered a boy. goal. Add to the fact that it was basically Pushkas's debut to the Western world of football. Yes, sir. So would immediately shoot up. They would go on to challenge England again, but this time in their home turf in Budapest, where they would go on to destroy the English players. Destroy Charles. With Pushkas scoring another two goals. Them England boys, man. Their dominance. They How many goals he scored? A scoring another two goals. Two. Only further England boys. Been going, I say. The Hungarian Communist Party was thrilled with the army's football team. It was like their star child that they wanted to show off to the world, and they were quite successful in doing so, hiding all the problems of their country <laughs> and all the corruption. That boy is happy as hell. They wanted to use the Hungarian team as propaganda yet again, only this time on the world's biggest stage the of world football, Cup? the 1954 World Cup. Hungary was off to an amazing start. They would absolutely demolish South Korea 9-0 with Pushka scoring two goals quite Damn, casually. Not? Next, they would go on to challenge West Germany, who are one of the major tournament favorites, and hand them quite a beatdown as well, winning the match 8-3. However, Pushka... Hey, bro, they are whooping ass, nine Against South Korea in their eight. Oh, West Germany here? God damn! Would unfortunately leave the game early due to a tackle by a West German player and was later found out to have suffered a hairline fracture in his ankle, oh, which would seemingly man. end his tournament run. That was dirty! Many great players in its own right. It was dirty! would still make it all the way to the final. Where they would once again meet West Germany. Despite having a hairline fracture and clearly he played? less than fit, Pushkas wanted to play the final. Some claim the Hungarian government forced him to, but others say it was simply his love for the game he was and his forced. desire to compete. He was forced. Amazingly, even though he was playing with a fracture in his ankle, Pushkas opened the match by scoring the first goal for his country. Shortly after, Hungary would score another goal, but this time West Germany would quickly score their own two minutes after and score an equalizer shortly after that. By halftime, the score was 2-2 two to two, until West Germany would score an 84th minute goal Man. to put them ahead 3-2. to two. And in the final minute of the match, Pushkas would seemingly equalize and save his country until the unfortunate offside flag had gone off. Yeah. And West Germany as world champions. Till this very day, that Hungarian squad with Pushkas is actually quite high up there on the list of international sides that should have won the World Cup. To the viewers worldwide at the time, Pushkas was amazing and did not disappoint at all. But back home for his country's communist regime, losing the final showed weakness and meant failure, especially losing to a Western state. The people of Hungary saw this and began to demonstrate in the capital of Budapest over the defeat of their team in the final. But after a while and many tensions later, their frustrations would eventually turn to their communist government as well. Losing the final meant that the government no longer supported their football team as much. And it was a direct reflection of how they were treating their people and they finally decided to take action. Damn! Because the Hungarian revolution began. It was a very dangerous... Over a football game! That's what you're telling me! The Hungarian Revolution started over a football game, bro. That's what you're telling me. And it was a direct reflection of how they were treating their people. Oh, direct and reflection. They finally decided to take action. Thus, the Hungarian Revolution began. It was a very dangerous time in Hungary, and many Hungarians would escape the country to look for a better life or to find somewhere safer to live. Pushkas and several of his Honved teammates would try to play for another league so they wouldn't have to stay in Hungary. Pushkas would flee the country and spend quite some time away from football, moving around Austria and Italy, got but to, being bro. unable to play despite his reputation and skill due to some political reasons to sign a refugee. I but knew it! I knew politics was gonna screw this man over, bro! But finally, after two years, Pushkas would find himself in Spain with no other than Real Madrid deciding to sign him and give him a chance. Now, I know they could. this clear. time in 1958, Pushkas was 31 years old, incredibly out of shape, and what? gaining a ton of weight, and also hadn't played football for basically two years. Man, that's Imagine some... how insane that would sound if your favorite club signed someone like that today. Despite all the odds, in his first season with Real Madrid, Pushkas would go on to score 25 goals in 34 appearances, which included four hat-tricks despite clearly hey, not being in the best shape. I mean, bro, if you saw Pushkas and had no idea who he was, you'd... Damn, that's real? Is this a real picture? I know. Ain't no way this is a real picture, bro. If Real Madrid accidentally signed a fan and let him play, then all of a sudden, hey, no way this is a real picture, bro. Cup for your club. And they won at home. Second year in Real Madrid really solidified that he wasn't just a fluke, but the real deal itself. He'd go on to have the highest goal scoring season of his career. See? 47 goals in 40 appearances. This coming off a layoff. Of the European Cup along the way. His play style in Madrid was far from his prime days in Hungary. However, his goal scoring and finishing is oh, really oh, 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 oh. His teammate and 
fellow legend oh. Alfredo De Stefano would carry the ball up and simply give it to Pushkas, or any other teammate would give Pushkas the ball near goal, and a huge majority but of the they time, stack up. result in a goal. After Stack his that, brain. From 1961 to 1965, Pushkas would help Real Madrid win five straight La Liga titles, Jeez. one more European Cup, and also had four scoring titles. The craziest thing is that Pushkas would retire at the age of 39, meaning that his incredibly successful run with Madrid would start when he was physically well past his prime. I mean, at the That's age of 37, crazy. the man was scoring 28 goals in 33 appearances. Bro. He missed most of, he missed his prime because of politics. Because of the revolution. Most players are usually declining by the age of 33. This man hung on a goddamn day. was especially at the ages of 35 to 39 is incredibly insane. Pushkas is an anomaly even within the other all-time great players. We think Damn, players he tries to wind it up like the least. Zlatan Ibrahimovic aging relatively well, but Pushkas was the very original. Age didn't seem to stop him. And despite his husky frame, Pushkas was well known for his commitment to training his stamina and cardio. All things considered, with him basically being a senior citizen out there. Pushkas holds the <laughs> record for the oldest Real Madrid player in history, along with the oldest to ever score a goal for the club. The Damn, only Real okay, Madrid Pushkas. player in history to score six goals in a single La Liga match, and the most goals ever scored in a single Copa del Rey season with 15. Hey, Just I'm a Copa del Rey champion in FIFA. For context, the best Cristiano Ronaldo managed was only seven goals. Goals. It's only right that the award for the most beautiful goal of each calendar year is dedicated after the late great Pushkas. Got to man. Doubt, out of he respect. Was the first and original goal scoring machine, <clears throat> ending his career with 625 goals in 629 appearances, as well as 84 international goals in 85 appearances. A mind blowing .99 goals per game ratio throughout a 24 year career, which just to remind you, saw him miss two years of his prime due to the conflict in his country. It's insane to think about. I think Pushkas' story is a very inspiring one, showing all the adversity he went through not only as a player, but as a person. Showing us that hard work and dedication always pays off no matter how much adversity you face. Yes, sir. He showed us that with true hard work, humility, and dedication, you can always improve yourself, and it's never too late no matter what people think. Yes, they sir. He was too old, and they told him he was too out of shape. But he continued to improve himself and work every day. And thanks to today's sponsor, Yes, sir, man. Pushkas have the same mentality and improve your skills and talents to a higher level. Skillshare answering this video. But that's gonna do it for me today, guys. Let me know what you think about Pus <clears throat> Bro, god damn, man. It's a sad story. I don't like reacting to these old dudes because it always end up sad, bro. You hear me? But he missed two years of his prime because of politics. They lost the World Cup and then sprung in a goddamn revolution. Took two years off of his prime. Man, bro, man. I, man, I want to apologize to this man for, for messing that up. How do you mess that up, bro? West Germany is really West Germany fault because they hurt that man on purpose. They gave that man a hurline fracture on purpose. Took that man out the game. Man, bro, that's tough, bro. That boy, that Puskas, man, he was a trooper. Played through World War One, Two, <laughs> Revolution, all of that, man. God damn, boy. That's goddamn trooper right there. That's an OG right there, man. Man, bro. Like, come subscribe, come on over to next time out, bro. Damn.